Hi everybody, welcome to Limelighting, where I'm going to... Nope, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did an awkward way to... Oh, that was good. <laughs> Welcome to Limelighting, where I'm going to shine the limelight on special people, places, and things. I have the honored pleasure to have a group of individuals that when I started working freelance for um, other board game publishers like Inside Up Games, this specific group was very, probably the most supportive group they were always there retweeting whatever I had going on. They were always talking about to other board game stores that there's a representative from a publishing company here in Indianapolis. And whenever anything special was going on, they were always welcoming to, to having me there to demo. I owe a huge part of how far I've gotten in the board game industry so far to these people. Um, their podcast, which we'll talk about very soon, is one of the funniest and one of the best podcasts you can listen to. And they also host an event every month that I, I hope other cities do. And I think it's one of the most special things to get together once in a month to play great games with great people. So with me today, is Tom, hey. his wife Lizzie, Hi. and David. Is that her husband? <laughs> so <laughs> they do the podcast, The Drinking Meeples, and then later we'll also talk about Keep Gaming Indie. Today, our special place is Books and Brews. Books and Brews has been extremely supportive of me. They've hosted a over half of all of our events, all of my events for Inside Up Games, they're local, they have their own local beers, because now they own Flat 12, and they're amazing. Yeah. Um, they have this theme of board games and books and brews with very special mugs that are handcrafted every year. Delicious. Cheers to books and brews. Cheers yeah. to books and brews. A place for people without a place. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. And thing, our intro together was pretty much this game, Gorus yeah. Maximus. It's a trick-taking game. But Z from Dice Tower has some videos. Uh, I think even I have some videos with Stork Plays and with Saltier Games, who's also in Indianapolis. So I'll have all of that kind of stuff, how to play it, reviews of it. But today, we're going to play and I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to play something special that doesn't get shown off very often, and that's Teams. Okay. Normal trick-taking rules, but David, you and I are going to be a team. Yeah. And Dream um, team. And oh. like, so <laughs> <You're> right already. <laughs> so I'm going to deal out. It's so insane. Yeah. And right, now that I'm sobbing from that, you know, heartfelt introduction. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's your name? <laughs> yeah. Who are you? It was so <laughs> nice. It was so nice that you said nice things that about was. us. You said very nice things. Did I? Yeah. We got five or six. I mean, I should just empty my hand, right? Yeah. Okay, I got ten. You got ten. Always make sure, because I might have left a card in the box. Ten. 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 You are an excellent Indeed. mathematician. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good luck with Dave, because last time I played on a team with him, he was I'm the worst. Yeah. So, I'm going to see who the common nice. denominator is today, then. Uh, yeah, because you were both. Terrible. Well, Jared's like an expert at this game, though. Yeah, and do you know how many yeah, times terrible. I've won at this game? Three, seventeen. Uh, probably three out of the fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think in teams I might have a better shot because now it's two heads are better than one. Well, yeah. Okay. Until it's bad heads. Yeah. <laughs> I dealt, so you get to play the first card. While you think about your first card, where are you guys from? Let's start with that. Yeah. Um, so, so Tom and I were well. You were not original, but uh, raised in Noblesville, Indiana. 
Um, and I, I was in Noblesville too. I just moved closer to you in Noblesville later on. But yeah. yeah, born in Noblesville, Indiana. Yeah, we've been buds for a really long time. So that's yeah. where we. It's a debatable amount of time, isn't it? Isn't this highly contested? <laughs> yeah, there's some questions. I, I've <laughs> conceded, but for the longest time I was like, no, Tom, you moved here in third grade. We had fourth grade together, like to start off. Yeah. And I was the awkward nerd kid. And he I, was, I was like. Chubby. Yeah, I'm <laughs> chubby, chubby kid. kid. And he's like, hey, will you sit with me on the bus? So it worked out. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I literally, I remember getting home, the bus dropped me off, and I ran. I'm like, Mom, I made a friend! I was, I was so pumped. <laughs> and we're still buddies. And now he still comes over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's great. You guys have known each other since third grade. Yeah. Allegedly. Did you guys start getting into board games at that time? Or was it later in life? No, not really then, right? Like, I, I played a lot of board games with family, but that was like Quelf and, you know, Monopoly basic, you know, family math style market. board games, math market. Yeah. I was an only child, so I didn't play any board games. Yeah. But we did the like typical tons of Settlers of Catan mm -hmm. in high school. Yes. Yeah. Illuminati, Steven Jackson, like Munchkin, things like that. Yeah. Pretty pretty lightweight, simple hobby Those games. Those are still like we, we played a game of diplomacy too. Oh yeah. Which man I could not handle in <laughs> And they're still friends. <laughs> I can still not somehow. Yeah, was, Europe too. Oh yeah. I forgot the yeah, yeah. card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she Jack said it this to the pink. Yeah. And then, Lizzie, where are you now here? Let's put it right in front of you, David. Oh. So we all see all the different cards and numbers. Right. So where are you from, Lizzie? I'm from Indianapolis. So um, Noblesville adjacent. I guess Noblesville is Indianapolis adjacent. Born and raised in Indiana. Spent basically my whole life here. David, don't hate me for this. No, not hate. Okay, good. That's all I got. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I can take it. Ooh, Hachi Machi. Hachi. Always happens. Anytime I change. Hachi Machi. <laughs> I just change right after. One well, hot daddy. So, did you hot play daddy. board games when you were a kid? I, what kind of board games did you play? It was similar to Tom. I played a lot of games with my family. A lot of catchphrase, a lot of word games, oh, yeah, things phrase. like that. That's still um, solid, though. We played, I played with my parents, and then we also played a lot on both sides of my family. So that was always something I looked forward to at holidays, Thanksgiving, you know, birthdays, anything like that. It was always great. And then... Um, I tried my hand at strategy a little bit, and then um, shortly before Tom and I met, I got into more hobby gaming um, at a former game library here called Game Paradise. It was run by a couple of wonderful people who just didn't pass any judgment. They had like 3,000 games in their library. Oh, wow. That's pretty good, actually. They were so kind. I'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you please help? And they didn't care if I asked for Monopoly. They didn't care if I asked for Pandemic, you know, Blood Rage, and... They always were making suggestions, and they were just so nice. Yeah. And very knowledgeable, the, too. Lots very of knowledgeable. Where was this at? So it used to be in Fountain Square, and then they moved to the old Volrath building, and then they're you no went longer... for punk concerts, right? Yeah. yeah. Used to yeah, have yeah. also be a punk venue, so like <laughs> right up my alley. Yeah. Naturally. Uh-huh. So, um, and then I met Tom, and he happened to also be into board games, and yeah. all of his friends were into board games. When did you guys meet? Four years? Well, technically yeah, we college, met in college. We both worked in the probation department, <laughs> but I was juvenile, she was adult, so we didn't like Night, talk very you much. Were, like, in the juvenile division, you were no. not yeah. a child. Yeah. You guys were dating, her. you was a child. She is far older than me though, so I want to point The restraining out. order is up now, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good. No, but then we, we reconnected through the magic of Tinder. Tinderella, <laughs> Later I'm a Tinderella. Life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. she sent me the first message, so. Lessons to be learned. And That's then right. somehow you guys came back around through Tinder oh, four that. years ago? Yeah. yeah, I graduated in 11. So and you're like, I know this guy. I didn't remember no. Oh, you He I was like, do you her. remember me? And I was like, nope. I'm <laughs> Who like, does? I can't place where I know you from. And she's like, I ah, probably know where. I have a familiar face. <laughs> I don't think that was it. I was like, did you go to Culver? Did you go to IU? Did you play rugby? All these things. And yeah, like, well, we found out IU and that narrowed it down. I'm like, okay, somebody at IU. We figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's your turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, too. Doing an interview and playing a game. It's, yeah. It's very, like, um, casuals can't hang. Oh. So it stays, stays Trump. It does. So I still follow suit. Yeah, you follow you Lee. still follow suit. But do you want to try to win it for us? Oof. The best I can do for us, Lizzie. Just a little shred of hope. 
That's true. So, it's true. But yeah, when we met, that's when like, that's when my board game collection maybe had ten games in it, yeah. and then like so four I got years this, ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or five or whatever it was, but yeah, pretty 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 much around then. Well, I'm coming up on my fourth year anniversary, and I met Lizzie at my wedding. I had a few games, but then I had a significant other for the first time, really ever. That was just also really into board games. So man, it's same. Really, we have like 300 now, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, we yep. just have so many games. Yeah, it's it not a like, problem, we can stop whenever we want. Yeah, <laughs> no. Like, um, before I met Katie, it was like 20-some games. That when we um, shared household, the first time we were like, oh, this has become out of control. Because you were not doing well at all. No. I'm just asking these questions and putting you in front of the camera, <laughs> just so I can finally win. Yeah. It's like, I want to beat you at a game. So no, I say that, and then I lost <laughs> yeah. against Mark when we played War Chest, so. I think War Chest is actually a game that we want, or that we got at the Keep Gaming yes. Indie. Um, the, the White Elephant? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Christmas that brought, we had right? here at Books and Brews. Yes, yes I did. And I, I had to drive all the way to Family Time Games to get it. It was nice. their last copy. That's good. Yeah. I guess I might as well. So... Things start going on about four years ago, and you guys are coming together, playing more games together. Uh, that's cute. Um, <laughs> yeah, the hyena eating a body. It's really, really, that's my favorite part. I really dig it. <laughs> I'm gonna play this. So, How dare you. do you have another eight, Dave? Did what? you guys, when you guys eight? came together, then you started playing more games? David, did you start getting more into the <laughs> board game scene because of these two? Um, you know, I, I feel like we've been a part of the board game scene for a while, but like we didn't get super intense until, yeah, probably until we started gaming together more and then the podcast started. Yeah. And then like we went from, you know, pretty avid board gamers to like brand this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like... Yeah, I think that's when it really took off, and I started learning more and more. Like, yeah. Who came up with the idea for a podcast? Well, okay, <laughs> and were you? What do you do for a living? Main um, job. I am a domestic violence outreach specialist for a statewide uh, nonprofit organization. What is your main job? I'm a director of family ministries at a local church. And what is your main job? I'm a student success advisor at a local college. So why did you want to do a podcast? Were you interested in audio or? Pod- I just love podcasts, and I I wanted to do a podcast. I had actually played around with the idea of doing a podcast by myself about board games and just doing like deep dives in like the history of games. Oh, that's nice. Uh, which, like, I have a segment that I do every once in a while called Board Games Through the Ages. Yeah. On our podcast. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like my dabble with that still. Um, and it's just like, I couldn't, I am, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it's just me, uh, so I decided to scrap that, and then we just tried a bunch of things, like, yeah, a bu- like, we, yeah. Played, we played, we had a lot of different, site, like, and it was like four hours long of just like audio recording that I like tried to get through, and it's just like, this is utter Because problem. initially he had us like recording, <laughs> while kind of like this, recording while we were playing the game and having conversation. So like while we're going over how the game goes and things like that, he could like reference those audio clips. It doesn't work well with audio, right? It, it would work okay with video. Sure. But it just like, There's it was a, a cool reason idea. Twitch isn't a podcast. Let's <laughs> yeah. just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then we, we played around with it for a while, and then we found... We start doing board game reviews, and that really worked fun, well for us. And you, and you did that for how long? Um, for a board game review, yeah, yeah, it was about a year of the reviews, and yeah. then we switched up the format a little bit. Yeah. And now we're we a try to keep show. it, yeah, variety show esque. And I will say, we started right before this game was broken, so our like initial segments and stuff, we we share similarities there, but we were technically first. I always throw that out there. Yeah, this but. game is broken. I. Th- feel is very much like that's a great show though. Uh, yeah. what was the TV show forever and it was like whose line is it anyway yeah. 10 minutes of us checking in talking about games we've played recently so still many reviews ish in there they're just not as formal yeah. as they used to be we yeah. don't dedicate an episode to a we show we just have a lot more open dialogue yeah now. that's the and next I, 10 minutes is that dialogue which I enjoy because I don't I did not enjoy reviewing games but I do revo- re- enjoy talking about games and my experiences with gaming but so much of my love for games isn't about the game itself, even necessarily. So yeah, it's hard to review. Well, it's about this, right? The experience you have with the people mm-hmm. and this. It's about this. Ooh, he doesn't have a yellow, so he's trumpeting. Trumpeting. 
jump and up. Okay. Nice. It's no, not, no, yeah. Great. It gives us one point. Yeah. And it gives us a zero. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. That's what I got. Okay. I don't have it. I know. I think, I think we already have that one, actually. Yeah. Well. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, that's a finally. Uh. Finally took a positive hand. Uh. Another hyena lead, you know, I, mm. as I do. That's all I got. But yeah, so now we're. Oh. I know. I had no choice. It's your fault, not mine. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Zero no. no time. No. That's pee pee. All right, That's all right. Pee -pee. All right partner. What do you got? Ouch. Okay. Hyena lead. Classic. I can work with that. Working with it. <laughs> ah, until I can't. Here you go. I hope that's your for us, Lizzie. That's two points. Oh well, yeah, but and a zero. Yeah, yellow zero. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah, that, uh, at that point we got that trick, but we lost a lot. Dude, this is one of the coolest trick-taking games ever. <laughs> So I've got a whopping negative two over here, Tom. I guess one. <laughs> With our negative combination. <coughs> and I have the zero. We're a negative three. Okay. Yeah, we're positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. Crap favor for y'all. Bam. Okay. All right, that's just one round, though. Yeah. All right, so you get the shuffle and deal out. I get the time to ask a question. Yes. So how long have you guys been doing the podcast? We've been up on two years in November. Yeah. What's been special about the podcast that you've been like, oh my gosh, like people are recognizing us. I haven't, I can't go in public anymore without people literally yeah, totally. chasing me yeah. and going, yeah. where's Lizzie? Where's Lizzie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, it's been really nice to like get to know other creators um, yeah. and like going to cons now. Like the first year that we did it, or like right before we started, it was like, oh my goodness, you're very famous, and and now like we're friends with those people. Uh, so that's just been a nice change. Yeah, um, that's something that being in the industry does too. Is you realize that anyone else who's doing content creation, like you or us or whoever, it's just people who like playing games and yeah. kind of want to share that love with other people. Lizzie, how do you feel about it? Um, so we met one of our now good friends, Jason Callum. Hi, Jason. Um, because at our first Gen Con as the Drinking Meeples, yeah. and he was like, are you guys the Drinking Meeples? And we were like, yeah. And he's like, I'm Jason. I'm like, oh, you're the one listener who's not our mom. It's like, <laughs> come on over. <laughs> and now we're friends, and we, like, he's in our community, which is so yeah. cool. So that has yeah. been one of the most like impactful parts of it, I guess. But honestly, like for me, it's just about having fun and talking about board games. One of the best parts about it is that I get to hang out with Dave and Sarah a lot more now, which is really cool. Sarah is Dave's wife. She's our executive director. Producer. Producer. Wow. Not Edie. Yeah. Edie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she helps keep us on She helps top wrangle us. When we're, yeah. when we're doing the podcast, she's the one like, you've been doing this for 10 minutes. Let's move on. Yeah. Which, we really want to respect that 30 minute time. Because yeah. that, that's what we like. We like a 30 minute podcast. That's what it's you usually like. like. Well, yeah, that's true. Use after board game. Okay. Bitch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now I'm going for the zero point hand that we have in front of us. <laughs> so. I'm taking this trick. So, okay, that's all I got. I'm taking it right now, so play the best green you can. Oh, because yeah. it'll have points? That's the best thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not negative. So it's good when the best green is a zero. <laughs> Yas queen. Yas green. Yeah. Right, speaking of sevens, mm. enjoy this bear eating an arm. Mm. Is Connor's favorite uh, picture? What, what's his title uh, inside up? Hey. <laughs> He is the decider of all things. Yeah, decider of all things. And he was, I remember you vividly, before we started our podcast, 
talk to you how Connor. handsome he is. Yeah. Well, yeah, he is very handsome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his biceps, like, oh. cool. But, but Dave was talking about, uh, or talking to Connor about, hey, we're going to start this podcast. Maybe you'd come and interview. We didn't know how to do it yet, yeah, right? And then Connor was like, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. So he was one of the first people as, like, a publisher that was super receptive of us. So that, that was really cool. Have you interviewed other publishers? Stephen Bonacore. Of? Uh, Stronghold Games and Indie, Indie Game Studios now. Right. He's been Oof. on. Taking it. Um, <laughs> we had Ted Allspotch of Bezier Games. He is a delight. Uh-huh. He was on. We did Bruce Vogue of North Star. Uh, yeah, he's awesome. We love Bruce. Um, so we did a live a live show with him yeah. at Gen Con. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. The audio quality is not great because we're in an exhibit hall, but I think the content was fun. Was that hard to do a podcast outside of your studio or outside of your home? Uh, we actually made it really easy, and we just used a... Um, a little tiny mobile recorder. So you're using that, so no matter what. So here. You don't, you don't have any blues? I was gonna check before I get screwed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right. Give me something good. That's why, that's why I teach how to play. <laughs> Who's your favorite person to interview? So Katie Aidley, they are of um, Katie's War Game, I think. It's a Facebook page, and they are so sweet. And they um, were just incredibly nice to me when I joined Twitter and started getting more into it, and I had all these concerns yeah. about being like, the woman in the board gaming industry, not industry, but like in the board gaming hobby, and they were, they like went out of their way to be pleasant and sweet and um, I think that that speaks world about a person, yeah. no matter yeah. what. And I think that they um, have a genuinely good heart, and they always made me feel very welcome. Um, and they talk a lot about mental health and like struggles yeah. with being non-binary. And I think that that visibility is very important. And so I'm very glad. Um, and then I'm hoping that we can um, interview Danny Quach. See, my favorite origin story from this year was. <laughs> I, uh, we were playing games with um, with Danny, uh-huh. and he's like, I'll be right back. And then I'm like, what is going on? And I see this person run by, and then I hear this, like, <laughs> thud sound, and I'm like, what the heck just happened? And I look over, and Connor is hugging yeah. Danny, and it is the most epic hug in the history of the universe. Yeah. yeah, it was incredible. And they were just so delighted, and it was so <laughs> sweet that I loved it. Yeah, I think I got a photograph. I I was I took a picture of them hugging at their booth and I never put it up online. I don't know why, so I still have it saved on my phone. Yeah. Who is your who's your favorite interview so far? Favorite interview. I don't think kill mine. I think Bruce was my favorite because he was yeah. just hilarious. Yeah, Man, Bruce um, was good. Bruce Vogue. Vogue. Vogue with North Star Games. Okay. Mike Delisio oh, was yeah. he's just a genuinely hilarious and giving person. Who's he on? I think I was gone that time. Mike Delisio yeah. does solo mode games. Solo mode dice tower. Um, he board. he has a podcast. Once in a while, or he used to also work like Saturdays at Game Preserve. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite interview was AJ Lambeth. Oh yes, who is with Colossal Games. Yeah, and he designed which game? Uh, Tommy Tommy Sama. Yeah. Ooh. Oh gosh, a triple, a triple ten. I know. I wonder what Dave's gonna play. Dave, you have the blue ten or the brown ten? I don't. No brown. Take the browns out. Oh, that's right. Uh, It's Lizzie's. That was a good one. Ugh. Not three points, but still. AJ is somebody who's, he's like kind of quiet-ish. I mean, he's really, I guess he's really not. He's just, he comes off know. as quiet. As yeah. soon as you ask him a question, he's yeah. more than happy to answer I you. didn't know how he was going to do on our show. And I mean, he just shown, man. Like, he knows what he's still doing. one of our highest downloaded shows. That's when we were still reviewing. And I just talked to him at Sun King at the last KGI event. The last, last KGI oh, event. Yeah. And I asked him if he would be willing to do one of these, we play Kami-sama or one of his games, and he said he would love to. We're going to get wrecked this round, and that's it. So Dave's taking it with a six right now. With a six, somehow. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Okay. 
Jared, you do. It's actually Jared. It's mine. Just but it doesn't say leading. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure we know who's gonna lead it. <laughs> we all saved our zeros. Okay. Did not think that one through. <laughs> oh golly! Wow. <laughs> I think that's safe. I think I gave away that negative. Not the greens. But we're at the end too, so somebody else could not have greens to contribute. But he does. Yeah. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> oh, I don't have the blue, I'm so sorry. Oh golly! <laughs> right. You guys take it. <laughs> But it stays blue with that switch there. What's on? 10. Oh. 13 total. Uh, negative 8. Negative 6? <laughs> and I had 3. Oh, good. Okay. So, so, negative 3. We did negative worse three. than we did last time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hang on to the, yeah. the favor? Okay. One, this two. potentially could be the last round, the last <laughs> winning round. So, That's right. We're playing 2 instead of the typical 3. I want to ask you, Lizzie. You thought of the idea of keep gaming indie however what were you guys doing before then that made you go maybe we should make this a public thing for everyone to know about so i think technically so tom and i have been talking about it for a while but i think andrew smith of board game quest might have technically started it hmm. because he sent us brad and amanda skaggs that was mike um, and I think Mike Delicio, um, a DM on Twitter, he's just sliding into our DMs, and he was like, hey, we should have, like, I don't know, like an Indianapolis base, or do you guys just want to all play games together? I see you guys all playing games together. And then we did a trial run, and Andrew came over and taught us Feudum for, like, four and a half hours, and somehow still decided it would be a good idea to be friends with us. Yeah. I'm sure he regrets that every day of his life. And then so we included Mike and Delicio on Andrew it. Andrew Smith. Does board game quest? Board game quest. Yeah, he does written reviews. Written reviews. Yeah, so and nobody reads them. <laughs> <laughs> written reviews. What year is this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well be a newspaper. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, so then we included Mike Delicia, who wanted to call it Iguana, which was like uh, something. Indiana really Gamers uniting around. I mean, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and so um, we had our first one of just over a year ago, our first Keep Gaming Indie. And we wanted it to be a free place for people to enjoy gaming because, you know, we talk a lot about race, ethnicity, um, socio um, and like gender as being big discriminatory factors in real life, but also in the gaming hobby. But we don't talk a lot about socioeconomic um, barriers to gaming because gaming is not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Wanted it to be a place where people could um, come together, play games, enjoy each other's company, try out different games without having to spend fifty to hundred dollars on it first. So uh, that's kind of where we landed, and um, it's a monthly meeting in the Indianapolis area. Sometimes it's in Noblesville, which is just north. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. It's probably the thing I'm most proud of. We have a great group of people: board games with Panda, Chubby Meeple. Um, Mike Delicio, Solo Mode Games, and Dice Tower. Man vs. Meeple. Man vs. Meeple. Cardboard Reality. Mm -hmm. There are just so many great people in Indianapolis. And it doesn't just have to be content creators. That's just how we all kind of met each other. And then other other people from the industry go there. AJ from Fossil. Mm -hmm. When I was working for Inside Up, I was going there, and I still go there. But I, and just some really awesome people that aren't in the industry because we don't want it to be like yeah, a, Jason Kelm. an industry club. Yeah. It's not. It's not an industry club. However, I tell people all the time, it's if you want to meet people like in general but some of these people that you listen to podcasts you listen to um you watch their youtube videos you read their content like these people are going to be there and it's you'll it's it's special it's still for me and I still geek out i can play these games with you guys and mike and andrew and mike austin um it's just and then you guys are like close friends yeah mm -hmm. We've I've met a lot, a lot of, of boobs. <laughs> signed zero boobs. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, yeah. yeah, we've made a lot of like genuine, fr genuine friends. We've made a lot of genuine friends since 
starting, which has been great. Um, uh, Katie's family now goes. Yeah, yeah, we saw. Yeah, we saw yesterday. So. Um, Andrew and Lynette. I knew it, dude. It was the second time, and I was like, oh. I like, That's about it. And I like wanted to look at you and be like, without showing you, is this a good idea? And you'd be like. Sure. I was like, that's not good. <laughs> Golly. My favorite event for KGI was the one, the Christmas one here. That was fun. And it was like all day long, <laughs> all night long. And then we had a big Christmas, you know, like pass around to everyone who showed up. Big, big, it was. Well, one reason we like it too, especially places like bars are an example. Usually Saturday during the daytime, they're not crazy busy. And so, like, to be able to say, like, I mean, win-win, right? We get to support a local business, have people buying mm-hmm. drinks and food and, and really ramp up the sales that day, and we get a place to play games, you know, that doesn't cost us anything but, but helps out the place we're going. We're not taking up space and, and not contributing. So, like, it, it's really nice just to be able to partner with our community in that way, too. And, and my idea with limelighting is similar to Keep Gaming Indie. Like, these people who are in your backyard, these podcasts, these YouTubes, the written reviews, the designers, these beautiful local places, and these cool games. Like, I'd like to show it all off. I just want other people to know about it. No, we only get this. Ooh, that was a ballsy move. I think, are we allowed to look at our pile? You are not allowed. Okay. Trick uh, team. I thought the negative eight was in there. Ready for this? Might be. You're gonna be mad. I'm... You're gonna be mad. I actually do anything. <laughs> Played a very inconsequential card. So. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> yeah. It's the best card I got to not giving them anything. Alright. But it potentially could give them five points. Fine. A lot of green got used there. So, baby. Baby got back, honey. Oh, starts oh. with a nine green. Oh. Oh. It's two points. That's 11. That's three points to us. Oh, David. Oh, David. I'm not happy. This might work out well. A four, which is nothing, and there's a 10. That is all ours. Hope I don't get it. Ah. <laughs> uh, I know. Now you have to fight over the sixes with the deals. Oh, uh, well, if you're going to take it. Dang it. <laughs> that makes me feel better. I'm trying to make it a little bit better. Yeah. I was right in assuming that if I would have played higher yellows, I would have been in trouble. Yep. Yep. That's what I did with a nine. Just a nine. Makes me twitch. This, I'm not happy. Um, <laughs> what are you guys hoping to do in the next year? That's a good Win question. the lottery? Oh, for that'd sure. Be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Um, oh. I don't know. We're always looking for ways, like we I think we get an itch around the year mark whenever we're doing something like this where like we need to change it up. Yeah, it feels stale. Gotta get some energy. So okay. We're, we're currently in the uh, the exploring process of like yeah. what's the next step of drinking nipples and what's that gonna look like? Fair enough, I can't argue with that. Sure would be great too. Lizzie, Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie. She Ooh. used the eight earlier. Oh, nice. Pew, 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 pew. Shot first. So you've got like, another 12. Or like That's another, the 12. Oh, eight. Another, 12. another eight? Another 12. Another. Oh, sure, sure. Sure. I'm dried up. So, I'll do that. <laughs> you still, oh, I you get it. I get it. Look at that. Oh, hey. Yeah, you won with a zero. zero. We keep it on that blue. That's five. Yeah. There. Baby boy. Yeah, I always have like an itch for doing. <laughs> I didn't know that. Time. <laughs> this is, do you need to see a doctor? <laughs> no, for doing video content. Ooh. But man, the time behind video is. That's why <laughs> these videos come out <laughs> once a month. Yeah, yeah. One thing, too, is we want to enjoy the hobby, right? Like, yeah. The more you get into it, even at conventions, we've kind of stopped really setting up a lot of meetings, Mm -hmm. even though they're really helpful for progressing in the industry. If you want to progress in the industry, take a lot of meetings, meet a lot of people, we just kind of want to do it because we love doing it. 
last two Gen Cons, I've worked, and I haven't minded it. <laughs> I'm, I'm in Orlando four ish times a week. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> loser. Uh, okay. <laughs> I suck. It's like, come on, partner. Hey, you guys still beat us that time, though. I got, oh, surprisingly, I have negative yeah. one, David. I have 13. You have 13? Yeah. So we have yeah. 12. You guys won. You did it. Hey, uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're a legal one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, um, it's oh, like so forky. <laughs> Where can people find you? This is your time to stare at that camera. <laughs> not like that. You're not. People can find us um, on the internet, as most things. We are Drinking Meeples on Twitter, The Drinking Meeples on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think that's all we have. And then our podcast is on Apple, Stitcher, yeah. Google And what Play. about your personal Twitter handle? Oh, it's, I think it's Lizzie.McGreevy. You sound very confident. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm Tom D. Shriver, if you want to find me on Twitter, plus the Drinking Meeple stuff that she just talked about. You can also be found at, at Keep Gaming Indie. Mm -hmm. You run that one. So, that's a good one. And if you want, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Drinking Meeples. You can buy our love. Yeah. yeah. There's the actually, American way. There's a, there's a tier for that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, don't worry about it. I'm not on Twitter very much. <laughs> they do the just social media side. I just make the podcast. But you're on there. You've yeah. got a handle. Uh, I'm, what is my handle? Thinking, thinking Meeple. Meeple. The Thinking Meeple. <laughs> Thank not you. Yeah. Just Thinking Meeple. Thinking Meeple. Because, um, you know, it fits our brand. <laughs> nerd. I am a nerd. Thank you Check. for helping me do this. Helping just be supportive and kind people and playing this goofy game that brought us together over a year ago. I know. The first time I met you was at Gen Con two years ago. We all met because the Inside Up thing was here. Yeah. yeah that was such here. a magical day. We met Connor and Tyler and Connor's entourage. Yeah. And Katie, beautiful Katie and Emily and beautiful Emily. And it was just amazing. Yeah. That was a fun day. That was like, it's one of my best con memories ever. Mm -hmm. It is still. Connor awesome. Con. That's what I call it. Connor, Connor Con. con. <laughs> so, Aaron. To Jared. To, oh, to Jared. cheers. The Thanks. lime lighting. The lime lighting. I'll just end it there. Thanks for joining us, and hey, keep lime lighting.